This is Josh Holyfield, and welcome to another episode of Make America Swole Again. A no bullshit, no sugarcoating, snowflake free podcast where I teach you how to step out of your comfort zone, stop dreaming, and start smashing your goals in fitness and in life. What is up, everyone? I hope you're doing very well on this beautiful Tuesday evening. Welcome to Make America Swole Again. This is Josh Holyfield, the man, the myth, the legend. So, this week, we are going to spend some time talking about the emotions that are associated with going through a change similar to what we're going through with this coronavirus quarantine and, you know, how we can discuss and talk about those emotions, get them out in the open, uh, and hopefully uh, help you guys <laughs> help you guys uh, cope, overcome, and uh, persevere through the challenges that our country is facing. Uh, Mike said, yo, this shit sucks. <laughs> no gyms. Yes, you're right, Mike. It absolutely does suck. Um, I'm doing my best to give you guys the tools that you need to kind of overcome that and uh, hopefully be better for it, you know, after this whole deal is over. But um, you know how it is, man. It's, it's just not the same. So... Um, for those of you guys who, give me one sec here, just let me pull something up. I am literally, I just got done, I was over at my mom's house eating some dinner, hanging out, talking, my son hanging out, talking to my kids, and I didn't actually get the time to sit down and go over and put together a script. So, we're going to be freestyling it. Um... If you guys don't remember from last week's stream, the whole takeaway that I wanted to kind of really bring to the table and kind of what I wanted you to walk away with from the podcast last week was, you know, the how you can, right? So as we start and as we progress and as we're going through these changes in society and things are happening and we're having to adjust, adapt and overcome... You know, you need to take the word can't completely out of your vocabulary. Throw that shit away. And instead, ask yourself how I can. Right? And just making that minor change in your mindset and your mentality and kind of what you, you know, how you look at things can completely change the outcome. Right? Because you become about creating solutions instead of focusing on obstacles. Right? And to give you an example, I don't know how many of you guys out there have bought a new car. Most people have at some point. But have you ever noticed that when you go out and you get yourself a sweet car and you got this, you know, whatever it is, let's say a red Mustang, and you buy this red Mustang, then all of a sudden you're driving around and you see all these red Mustangs. Oh, there's a Mustang. Oh, there's a Mustang, right? And the reason for that is because you're looking for it. It's now in, in your mind. This is something that you're concentrating, you're focused on. is So you're going to notice those things more, right? Your mind is always going to uh, focus and kind of draw attention to the things that you have in the forefront. The things that you're focused on and the things that you're thinking about. Okay, so what I'm trying to teach you is thinking about it from the perspective of uh, becoming a solution focused instead of problem focused. You immediately start thinking about solutions when they're presented to you, right? That's kind of the idea. Think yellow car, see yellow car. Think solution, see solution, right? James, what's up, man? James Sohn, what's up? No member fees. That's right. 
uh, damn, we got three Jameses in here, back to back, boom, 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 James Jaramillo, how you holding out? I'm back in the mountains logging, so I'm getting my workout good, man. I'm glad to see that you were able to make the time to log in tonight and, you know, tune in and listen along. I'm going to jump on here real quick, and before I get into the uh, the content for you guys, so I'm going to send out a quick Facebook message, letting all the followers know that they can tune in and listen to me blab on for the next hour, 45 minutes to an hour, if that's okay with you. Like I said, I'm a little bit behind. If you guys aren't aware, um, the whole reason why I record this podcast live and I stream it is so that you guys can interact and talk with me. So if you have questions, you have comments, I try my absolute very best to respond to every single comment in here. Sometimes it gets a little bit crazy. I've got admins in here who follow along. Um, and you'll get answers from them, okay? So let's see here. The Make America Swole Again. Don't mind my loud keyboard. Cast is live. Tune in and interact with me here. Boom. All right, let's send that off to you guys. So if you guys don't know and you're subscribed to my Facebook messages, what I like to do is I'll send out notifications for things like that so you guys can get the the skinny directly from me. All right? Let's see what we got here. Jim, using two 25-pound dumbbells and 50-pound resistance bands. Hell yeah, man. You can actually combine the use of the resistance bands with the dumbbells on some of your workouts. You should try it. And if you have questions, shoot me a message, man. I can help you out. Help you out. Okay. James said, new car wears off with the when those payments come in. <laughs> Chris Griffith, thank you for all you do. Absolutely, brother. I'm happy to be here. Happy to be able to sit here and chat with you guys. Hey, Sue's from YouTube watching. Been waiting for you to go live. Hell yeah, man. I'm glad you're here. Uh, let's see. James, how the floor. Oh, dude, the floor. If you guys can't see behind me, I've got this TV that I'm getting ready to hang up right here where I got my Josh Holyfield sign. I'm going to move my Josh Holyfield sign over the top of my desk here. I decided to move it. The desk actually used to be on the wall where the TV is. But if you look down real closely, you can see I finished the trim. The quarter round is all put down at the bottom of the baseboard there. And uh, the space is coming along real nice. Um, this side over here, let me see if I can adjust the camera. It's a pain in the ass to move, but that's my front door and that's an entryway. And then on this side, you can see the door there is a walkthrough and, ah, shit. (laughs) Give me a sec here. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to close it off. So on the main entryway right there, we're gonna have some real nice French doors. And then this side, there's a closet right here and a little hallway. We're gonna close off the other end of the hallway. It's maybe just enough space for a person to stand in. And then that's gonna be, a, and so it's gonna be basically a den in here or an office. Uh, the plan is for us to make this junior's bedroom because this is the only space that is downstairs. All the other bedrooms in my house are upstairs. So downstairs is the master bedroom. This, what's supposed to be is the dining room and then the living room and the kitchen and then the, and then the mud room. So um, the plan is to turn this into his space. I'm probably gonna move upstairs, move my recording space up there. Really haven't figured out how we're going to lay that out and what we're going to do and what the plan is. But the floor is done. Uh, I just went down today and spent another 300 bucks on stain for my fence. I've got about 300 feet of fence around my backyard that I'm going to paint tomorrow. Uh, Hopefully I'll, I'll put up some before and after pictures for you guys. So I'm really trying to stay busy and stay active by getting caught up on some yard work. I've got a couple shingles. I got to go up onto the roof and repair and just, you know, trying to keep, you know, improve my quality of life, you know, and, and that's really one of the ways that I've been focusing on 
keeping myself busy, active, and keeping my mind active, which is actually a great question that you asked about the floor and kind of a segue for me because uh, that kind of lends to what I want to talk about today. Hold on, let me let the cat in so you guys don't have to listen to him whine at the door. I think I'm gonna go with the headphones off tonight. You guys get me in my full. What is it? See, like James said, that the bearded sexitary. <laughs> uh, Mike, <coughs> excuse me, Brandon. Uh, appreciate the tips on the deadlifts. Hell yeah, man. Um, hopefully those worked out for you. The second your back starts to round on that deadlift. Especially when you're going heavy like that, you're pulling a quarter ton. You know, you, you want to focus on making sure that you're not going to blow your, your spinal cord into pieces. So that was my priority, was making sure that I could prevent you from getting yourself hurt, man. You did, you did great, dude. 500 pounds is an extremely respectable weight for deadlift. Uh, Chris... Oh, thanks, man. I appreciate it. I, we really worked hard on the floor. My stepdad helped me... And, He's a genius when it comes to that stuff for like all the hard closet and corner cuts that are real difficult to get. Uh, he was able to help me with that stuff. So it, it was a, it was a lifesaver. He makes all that stuff super easy. Um, Mike house is looking good. Thanks, man. I appreciate it. Eric. Thank you, Dan. I have a hard time gaining weight. Any advice? I'll get to that question at the end. Do me a favor. Remind me as we progress towards the closing and I'll hit you up about that one, man. I don't want to get off stream or off topic about uh, talking about macros and nutrition and stuff, but I'm sure James will drop the link to my macro guide for you. That'll be a great start for you, which has a calculator in there. You can pump your, your uh, macros and, or your weight and stuff and get your macros. Uh, So he said, you, you said you're thinking about doing videos or homesteading farming on homesteading slash farming. What video do you recommend? Um, so GoPros are really great because uh, they're they're uh, they're portable, easy to use. Press a button and it records. The only thing that you have to be aware about when you're using a GoPro is uh, two things. The first thing is is a battery life sucks. Uh, especially if you're recording longer videos. And then the other thing you have to be aware of when it comes to a GoPro is it comes by default with a fisheye lens, which is a wide angle lens, right? So if you ever look back at some of my older squat videos, gym videos, you, you'll notice the difference where the camera you can see is showing like everything to the side of me, right? That's on a GoPro. So sometimes it's really good, sometimes it sucks. Uh, but to be honest with you, man, if you're just getting started and you're you know, wanting to make videos, the camera on your iPhone or Android is probably sufficient. And don't mind the, <laughs> the cackling from the, from the dog's, uh, dog's feet as, or nails as he's walking through my house. He's literally doing laps. Go lay down. Um... We, uh, <laughs> so the ground, the floor is too slick for him. So when he tries to stand up and he's laying down on the floor, he can't stand up. He's too old. He slips. So I actually had to go on Amazon and buy him. <laughs> You're going to laugh. I had to buy him socks with grip on the bottom of them so he can walk around the house. <laughs> Without sleeping. <laughs> Sorry, I'm trying to make it a point to eat more fruit. Eat more vegetables. So I started drinking a smoothie every day. This is my smoothie. Got it in here. Richard, what's up, man? James, good to see you, man. Uh, glad to hear you're here. Glad, glad you're here, and I'm glad you were able to make it. Uh... 
He said, I've been doing three weeks of bulking and three weeks of toning, trying to slim my stomach and make the rest of my body solid. Jack, a friend of mine, told me it would work achieving my goals, but it's t- but it'll take longer. What's your opinion? Um, it's actually a good question, and I'm going to be honest with you. Three weeks of anything, as far as the gym is concerned, really isn't going to do much, especially if you have a lot of progress to make. Um, when it comes to the term bulking or toning, I would say about 80% of what you're doing is actually more your diet than it is the way that you're training, um, which is why my programming I sell on 12 week, week imp- increments because three months is a su- sufficient amount of time for you to actually be able to you know achieve what you're trying to achieve. Um, my advice to anybody who has fat to lose is... Get yourself to a place where you're comfortable comfortable with your body fat percentage and how you look uh, as far as your your you know total fat is concerned, and then you can look at bulking. Because if you were to do a three week bulk and then a three week shred and then a three week bulk, uh, the three weeks of bulk is just going to basically counteract as far as fat loss is concerned uh, the the shred that you did. Right. So the whole idea with, you know, the macros and like I said, I don't want to get into too much detail is when you're bulking, you're eating in a surplus, which means you're giving your body more than it needs. When you're shredding, you're you're eating in a deficit, which means you're giving your body less than it needs as far as carbs are concerned so that you're going to burn fat. So when you're flipping back and forth between that, it's just going to be basically law of averages. You're probably going to see residual muscle and strength gain over time, and that's just because you're lifting weights. Um, If it was me and I was in your situation, I would get myself down to where I want to be as far as my fat is concerned, and then focus on building the mass and the size. All right. (laughs) Kirk, I have two herniated and one bulging at my L4 and 5 and 6. Um... My recommendation to you is to work within your limits, okay? Uh, As far as back and and, uh, leg exercises, um, you know, I've got issues between my L4 and L5. I have a condition called spondylosis, um, which prevents me basically, it's basically a fracture in the spine. And what happens is when I put too much pressure on my spine, it gets uh, super inflamed. My muscles tighten up. It gets painful. Uh, what I would do is get advice on from your doctor as far as what your limits are and where they should be, and then focus on lifting with lighter weights to strengthen the, the muscles, and then progress from there within your limits and tolerance of pain. Uh, my only concern is bursting or causing additional damage, which is why I would recommend you consult with a medical professional. Heather, what's up? Good to see you. Robert, core workout seems to do the best for me. Sorry, let me scroll back up to that. I'm a small guy. Any thoughts? Um, As far as core workouts are concerned, I'm not really sure what you're talking about. Ab work, planks, things like that. Um, What I would advise for any small guy or anybody, to be quite frank with you, trying to build size and mass, is to always focus focus on the compound lifts first. If you guys notice the structure of any of my 12-week training, it's, excuse me, hiccups, always built around compound training compound exercises okay that's those come first and then we focus on the accessories sorry i got these hiccups and i'm trying to get them to subside yeah the other thing that you can do kirk uh in addition to working within your limits obviously is uh, figure out different stretches and things that you can do to loosen those muscles as they tighten up. Uh, one of my personal training clients we do one-on-one with online, uh, he was having issues with uh, pinching in his hips when he was trying to do squats. And we were able to find out and create a stretching regimen that he does before leg day that um, basically 
it was so bad where he was unable to put his heels on the on the ground when prefer, performing a squat. And at first, it was me adjusting his, his t- where his toes were pointing and how wide he was going, but he was still having issues. We came to the conclusion that his hips were too tight. And we started working on loosening those up. Now he's able to do full range of motion squats with correct form. So you'd be surprised what stretching does for you, man. German volume train. There's a reason why. To answer your question, Daniel, what's your opinion on German volume train? There's a reason why uh, that program has been around and successful for as long as it has been. Uh, the concept of volume training for hypertrophy is... Um, exactly what professional bodybuilders are doing to build excess of mass. Um, There's a couple of different schools of thoughts in terms of uh, how to build strength and size. Um, From my perspective and kind of what I've experienced for myself is when you're at the beginning to intermediate stage of your weightlifting, I say career, Okay, Um, the fastest and most effective way to bulk up and get big and strong is by doing low volume, high density training, which means low volume, high weight, right? We're doing a rep range of six, seven, maybe reps, four, four, four or five sets. Super heavy compound lifts all the way through. That's what the bulking season program looks like. Okay. Um, <clears throat> but eventually when it comes to, you know, your body is just going to stop adapting to that. Right. I'm actually starting to get to a place where it's difficult for me to get any bigger um, by lifting that way. And so what I've done is I've adjusted my training a little bit. Uh, to do immense amounts of volume. So we're talking about high volume, high repetition, low weight, just pump. And so the, the concept with the hypertrophy there is I'm going to put as much blood as humanly possible into my muscle to stretch and tear that thing to force it to grow. Um, for a guy who's new to the gym, the type of pain and volume that we're talking about to achieve this is not something that they're going to be accustomed to even even understanding, right? And I'm trying to convert you guys when I talk about lifting to failure and what that means and what that looks like. But um, if you're new to the gym, you just get... You get more fulfillment, you feel better, you're getting stronger, you're getting noticeable size increase, your body is changing very quickly when you're doing a low density workout. Um, And it's just mentally better for you because you're getting the results. When, if I was to take a new guy and put him right into a high volume program, he would probably have a really difficult time with it because The pain we're kind of talking about here is something that you kind of have to be a little bit fucked up in the head to enjoy, right? You ever see those videos of Arnold doing curls and he's like, he looks like he's getting ready to fucking cry? That's because he is. These guys were doing so much volume that their muscles were... unable to even be used after their workouts right so um my advice is depending upon where you are german volume training is an excellent program it's you know tried and true um but if you're new and you're trying to put on size doing a low density workout is probably going to be more successful for you okay all right (sighs) Brandon, I've been trying to lose weight for a year. I started at 395 and I'm down to 350. So you lost 45 pounds. That's good, but seem to be stuck. I've been doing the four-week program and eating more conservatively. Anything you would suggest? Supplements, more calorie cuts. Uh, My advice to you, Brandon, is to uh, shoot me a message, man. We can talk about it. First things first is to make sure we get your diet where it needs to be making sure that we're getting the intensity of your training and your workouts where they need to be. 
Uh, there's a lot of variables and factors that could be impacting a plateau that you may be having. Uh, and so in order for me to really make a, uh, a educated assessment on what changes need to happen, it's going to require a much more, uh, in-depth conversation. So shoot me a message, man, and we'll, and we'll work it out. Okay. In the meantime, go onto my website and take a look at the macro guide. Uh, there's a calculator there to get you started. Okay. All right. Dave, what's up, man? Good to see you. Um, all right, let's see. Josh, good to see you, man. Glad to see you're here. Um, Ernie, good to hear you. Good to have you in the in the podcast, brother. Uh, I hear you on the pain. Started the 12-week shred and my chest is killing me. Yes. <laughs> it's not... I'd be lying to you if I told you it was going to get easier. Okay? All right. Heather, the mom in the group, no pain, no gain. Just know your limit. <laughs> Listen, <laughs> my mom already lives across the street. We don't need none of that here. None of that negativity. Know your limits. We don't. We don't do that here. All right. We we fucking we we'll uh, rest when we die. All right. <clears throat> so let's take some time to talk about. I'm going to tell you a little bit about me. Okay. So. Um, when I, I'm, we're going to go back to 2005. Okay. I'll give you a little bit about me. I was the type of guy and I still am. I really don't plan anything. I just do it. It's just how I am. I, most of the time I wing it or if I'm going to go to do something, I'll come up with the plan right before I do it. Like, okay, this is what I'm going to do. And I do it right I spend more time executing and learning from my mistakes and hands-on learning than I do anything. Well, for my entire life up to 18 years old, that worked out pretty well, except it was time for me to graduate from high school and I had no plan, no, no, had no idea what I was going to do, and which is why, mostly why I joined the military. It was an easy answer. And I did that. Okay, so... When I joined, I, I, I went in and I was an intelligence analyst, believe it or not. <laughs> uh, and I was very good at my job, very successful at my job. I was assigned to 1st Cavalry Reg Regiment, or Division, excuse me, getting mixed up with my Marines and, and uh, Army. But 1st uh, Cavalry Division, and about six months after getting to my first duty station, I deployed to Baghdad during the peak of the war, okay? So at that time, it was extremely intense. Every day was fulfilling, doing my job. I was good at it. I was successful. By the time I left Iraq 15 months later, I was so good that I left with a promotable status and maybe a month or two after I got back, I was promoted sergeant. Okay, so that's how quick I got promoted. It was about two, two and a half years from the time I joined the Army, I got promoted to sergeant. Okay. At the time, I was talking with my wife. Where do we want to go? I'm re-enlisting. Here are my options. We chose together that we wanted to do Hawaii, so we moved to Hawaii. When I got to Hawaii, I was part of a unit called the 94th Army Air and Missile Defense Command, which uh, to translate for you was basically a retirement castle for a bunch of senior non-commissioned officers and officers pushing 20 years, 20 plus years, getting ready to move. Wasn't really much action. Job wasn't fulfilling. It was extremely boring for me. And I got severely depressed it, it impacted my relationships impact impacted my performance impacted my my own well-being my fit, fit my physical well-being the whole nine yards and the reason why I had such a hard time was because I was unable to adapt okay so we as people, 
just generally speaking, human beings are creatures of habit. We're creatures of comfort. And in today's society, in today's world, we're kind of taught that, oh, if that's uncomfortable for you, it's okay. You don't have to do it. If you don't like that, oh, it's all right. You don't have to do it, right? It's very, uh, you know, society today is focused around the whole concept of let's just make everything easy for ourselves, going thinking about from the perspective of how technology is developed with the internet it's to the point now where we don't even have to leave our house to have social interaction with people right (laughs) get social media it's most of which the way i interact with you guys which is great because it's extremely powerful right i have the ability to jump onto this podcast and you know jump on a facebook and interact with thousands of people every week and it's incredible but um, you know, from the other end of the perspective, you know, other end of the you know, spectrum, it's it, it could be potentially detrimental to your mental health and well-being. Okay, so my whole thing that I wanted to talk about was, you know, most of us have developed or have begun to develop this routine and this lifestyle that we're choosing to live, which includes, you know, going to the gym and being involved and going to work and having all of these things that we know are coming. It's your comfort zone. It's a place where you're uh, happy and content, right? And it becomes very easy for a person to just kind of get caught in that cycle of living. Okay. And so last week's podcast, I talked about how, you know, we shouldn't be using this coronavirus and this quarantine and the stay at home and this and that as an excuse to let ourselves, you know, stop pursuing our goals when it comes to our health and fitness, stop pursuing our goals when it comes to our personal development. But the one thing that I didn't really address is the emotions that come with this change. And as we're progressing, you know, pushing a month that we've been facing this, this pandemic, you know, we're, things are starting to settle down. Tiger King is a couple weeks old. Everybody's watched it. Things are just kind of, and I even noticed like the activity levels on the Facebook group, on the Instagram page. People just aren't as involved, they're not as engaged, they're not active because they're not active at home and they're not doing anything but kind of just being complacent and sedentary, right? So a part of that has to do with the fact that when you get completely ripped out of your comfort zone, ripped out of your routine, ripped out and all that's just like a rug taken out from underneath you, It can be almost that depression, that anxiety, that fear, you know, those things creep up on you. And next thing you know, you're sitting there and you're just like, man, like today, I'll even give you an example. Today, it was about five o'clock. I cooked myself some dinner, ate my dinner with my son and we're hanging out and I was talking on the phone with the lady and I was like, man, Uh, I'm going to eat this dinner and then I'm going to go work out. I didn't end up working out. Why? Because it just wasn't convenient for me to go through that at that time. And I allowed that emotional kind of complacency to take over and that depression to take over and put me into kind of that funk. And so I wanted to take some time to talk to you guys about this depression. And this is something that I face and personally fight on a daily basis, I have uh, I, I, I fight depression, I fight anxiety, it's pretty bad sometimes. What's up, Bill? Good to see you. Um, and I've talked about it before as far as those emotions are concerned. And, you know, obviously, no, you can't control those emotions, especially when it's a diagnosis and, you know, that's something that you have. But what you can do is you can mitigate. And 
The way that you mitigate the onset of those types of negative emotions is by keeping your mind actively engaged in something, right? So for me, the longest for the longest time, the way that I've fought this demon is by keeping myself focused on the gym, pursuing my goals actively when it comes to my professional career, my career, pursuing my goals as far as the growth of my businesses are concerned, um, pursuing, you know, great relationships with my, my kids, you know, like those are the types of things that keep me going. And so what I do is rather than spending my time focusing over here on the things that are wrong and the things that aren't going right, I force myself and my mindset and my mentality to think about the positive things that I can obtain and get from certain circumstances and situations so that it's not something that is going to be detrimental to my life. It's just going to be me adjusting fire. It's just going to be me uh, making adjustments or adapting. Right? So the concept is with this whole depression and this whole anxiety. And before I get into that, I want to just really quickly say if you're tuning in and you have some input or you want to share some of the emotions that you've been going through since this has all happened. Um, I'm sur- sure there's a lot of us who are dealing with uncertainty. There's a lot of us who are dealing with fear, doubt. Um, there's probably some financial stress that's occurring if you're not going to work. Um, go ahead and do me a favor. And if you don't feel comfortable, that's okay. But drop your thoughts and kind of your feelings in the chat. and Maybe share some ways that you've... Uh, uh, focused on overcoming and, and dealing with those things, okay? And the idea here is not for you to put your make yourself vulnerable to the rest of the group. It's for two reasons. The first is, if you take the time to type something out and put it into the chat, this is basically an affirmation and an acknowledgement for you that this is something that you're dealing with. And now you have, instead of allowing this thing to creep in the back of your mind... You've brought that demon into the open, into the light, and you can focus on overcoming it rather than letting it creep and crawl in the back of your mind. And the second reason is because if you decide that you want to share those things, you might be helping somebody else, right? So real quick, I'm just going to take a second to refill my drink. And then when I come back, I am going to go and read off some of those and we can share them talk about it and then uh, we'll go over some of my thoughts on your guys' responses and kind of what your take is on all that stuff and then I will uh, talk about you know um, some of the techniques that I use and we can kind of go over that okay so give me about one minute
All right, thank you for your patience. Looks like I lost a couple of you during the break. However, that's all right. Uh, looks like some people may be still typing here. Let me go check the Facebook group. Let's see, Josh's program is the one that he checks on you or he answers you and he cares. You may have to change it some, but he has good guidelines or goals. <clears throat> All right, so I'll, I will uh, I'll hang out here and give you guys an opportunity to finish typing and going through. Kirk said, mine is going through divorce and trying not to have memories overwhelm me, especially being quarantined. I was going to the gym with my friend five days a week at six and staying active. Now everywhere I look or any song I hear brings her back into my mind and I get depressed. So... Uh, so I'm going to open up to you a little bit. Uh, this isn't something I, I normally do. Um, back in 2017, I went through a pretty traumatic divorce. Um, and basically the, the, the circumstance of that divorce uh, revolved um, around some infidelity in the relationship uh, it was pretty pretty painful for me to undergo and experience that that degree of betrayal. I had been married for ten years with two kids, and it was a it was a huge adjustment for me. Okay. Um, now I'm not gonna say that my relationship with you know my ex wife was perfect, um, but. What I will say is that, you know, it's when you're in the moment, no matter what it is, it's very easy to take the positive and the negative things that you have from a relationship for granted. And you think and you focus on where, you, where you're at right now and how you feel right now. And I know for me, it was challenging to overcome those emotions, very similar to what Kirk is talking about, because um, there was just so much. What There's uncertainty. What's going to happen? How are things going to turn out? There's, you know, depending upon the circumstances of your divorce, you may miss that person. Um, you spent so long with another human, human being where it almost feels like your life won't ever be the same without them or there's so much change that has to occur that um you know uh there's so much change that has to occur that's almost scary because there's so also uncertainty that comes with that right hi baba um so since you know pretty shortly after the divorce i i i met my current wife and you know, I look back and there are always going to be thoughts and memories of, you know, happy moments and sad moments and things that, um, you know, I may have that I miss that I don't miss that, you know, it, the bottom line is, is we, we were in love at one point. Um, I still you know, have those memories of the things that happened in our relationship and we have children together. Um, so what I'm going to tell you, man, is going, going through divorce, I wouldn't wish that upon any person because it's such a challenge. It's so difficult, especially when it's under dire circumstances. However, um, one thing that I did was I used that experience as a catalyst for growth and change in who I am as a human being. And I can tell you right now, I wouldn't be sitting here in front of you guys. I wouldn't have joshholyfield.com. I wouldn't have Alpha United. I wouldn't have the career that I have. I wouldn't be where I am. I wouldn't have my son. I wouldn't have my wife if it was not for that divorce. And so um, I, look at, I look back at that experience and those memories and I take the positive things from them and 
I recognize that despite the challenge and despite the difficulty and despite the uncertainty and the fear, um, you know, that's something that I can carry with me as an experience to learn from. Carry that with you and use it as an opportunity to reflect internally, right? So one of the things that I dealt with going through divorce that was probably most challenging for me was where did I go wrong? How did I fail? Because I felt like I failed not just myself, but I failed my children, right? Because now they're the ones who are taking the brunt of this catastrophic life-changing event. Right? They're the ones who are going to have to go back and forth and play this mommy-daddy game. I'm going to move on with my life and eventually, like I did, find someone else that makes me happy and that I can be with. But my children are still and forever will be caught between that. And that was very painful for me to, to undergo and acknowledge and accept was that that was something that I was doing. Um, so... My advice to you going through that is use your divorce as an opportunity to look at yourself in the mirror with no mask, with no facade, be completely vulnerable, open and honest with yourself and ask yourself how you could have been a better person, how you could have been a better partner, how you could have better acknowledged the needs of your partner and what you could have done to be a better person person on your side of the relationship that may or that may have at least assisted with mitigating the failure of the divorce right because that's what divorce is it's a failed marriage and it takes two um so going through a divorce is challenging because it's hard you want to place blame you want to point the finger well she's this well she's that well he's this well he's that But the last thing that we want to do is take the time to self-reflect. And so my advice to anybody going through divorce is to be open, transparent, and honest with who you are. With not just your family, your friends, your kids, but also yourself. And see what you can do to change who you are so that you don't undergo that same type of failure again in the future. Right? All right. Heather said, my anxiety and fear doesn't have so much to do with COVID-19. It's just in general about being healthy for the future. I'm working six to seven days a week now. I live alone and I'm worried about family trying to decrease stress and be healthy. Right. So the one thing that really sucks about anxiety and Kayla has it pretty bad is think about like you always see like the funny memes on the internet, right? Like you sit back and you're like, man, like, um, you know, suddenly this thought will come in your mind. What if this happens? And then you find yourself playing this what if game for who knows how long. And now you've created this entire fucking scenario of things that could occur, could have, or may occur in your life. And it, it literally eats you from the inside, right? And so what I do to help with my anxiety, and the only thing that you can really do to help with anxiety is two things. The first is, kind of like I said earlier, you need to keep your mind active and focused on things that you're able to control, right? So... For me, like you guys have heard me talking about, it's been the projects around the house. You know, I went into work a couple days last week. I had some projects I had to work on there. Um, You know, just keeping yourself engaged, right? Um, The other thing that I really, really try to do when it comes to dealing with anxiety is... Going back to the mindset thing that we were talking about earlier, right, is if I'm in a situation where um, I have something occur in my life, rather, rather than focusing on the negative aspects of that, 
rather than focusing on the things that uh, may not go right, I try to focus on the things that I can benefit from in those circumstances. So kind of like Heather said, you know, it's she's worried about being healthy for the future. Well, the great thing about that is that's something that you can control. So um, when you're actively engaged in a group like mine and you're talking back and forth with me and you have questions like that's what I choose to do. This is what I'm passionate about. I'm here for you. Right. And I think that's one of the biggest keys that people need to understand and acknowledge, recognize and take advantage of is when you're undergoing an emotional distress of any type, whether it be depression, anxiety, whatever, you know, you may want to feel like you need to shut down or shut up, shut people out or close off or internalize for, you know, whatever reason, you don't want to share those feelings because they're too personal. You don't, you know, want to make yourself vulnerable to people that you know. There's a million reasons why. But at the end of the day, there's always somebody out there who cares. And if you're watching this podcast, I know for a hundred percent certainty that there's somebody out there who cares because I care. And I know that every other person who's watching this podcast cares. So if there's something that you do need help with, there is something that you're struggling with and you need advice or you just need somebody to talk to, reach out. And that's what we're here for. And that's what I choose to be here for because I care. Okay. <laughs> James said, little guy checking on dad. Here he comes popping in again. He's going back there to his table. He did a late nap today. So him and I are going to be up hanging out tonight playing some Call of Duty again. <laughs> <laughs> yeah that's funny huh <laughs> yeah <laughs> so last I got a little story for you we'll take a break right I usually post that chair behind me you see it he'll usually post up on it while I'm you know hanging out on the computer working or playing games or whatever and he's like my buddy like everywhere I go he goes that's just the way it is right so I'm in the middle of this intense game of Call of Duty. I'm playing. I'm like, yeah, you know, getting in. I'm doing really well. And I look over after the game is over. And this dude is completely naked. Off of the chair. Sitting on the floor underneath my table right here. I look down. He looks up at me. And is, I'm like, fuck. What is, he pooped, right? What is that smell, dude? This dude, he looks up at me. His whole face... His stomach, his hands, his legs are just covered in shit. I roll my chair back. I look down. His diaper's over here with a turd in it. And there's little tiny turds all over my floor. I'm like, first of all, I'm like, thank God I just did my floors. This vinyl, whoop, just wiped it up. But, dude, I was furious. Right? <laughs> I, was fu I was so mad. I'm like, dude. So I literally picked him up, took him, put him in the bath. He's freaking out. Like, I'm mad. I come out here. I clean everything up. I go in there. I wash him off. Dude, I, my daughters didn't do that shit. Like, the absolute worst that either one of my daughters did is she would get put on timeout and be standing on the wall. And she would spit on my wall because I put her on timeout. And she would get in trouble for it. This dude, he's, like, exceeded every expectation I have as far as, like, how bad a toddler can be. He's insane. I'll never forget the shit body story. <laughs> Bill said, out of every, everything bad that comes, something good, accept the change and roll with it. Yes, sir. All right. Kirk, good night, man. Hopefully, uh, my, the advice that you got from us helped out. If you have any questions, brother, make sure that you shoot me a message, dude. All right. <clears throat> uh, okay, got to ask what your cheat meal or snack is. <laughs> So, um, 
I've really, 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 really been focused on trying to trim down. Um, if you guys haven't noticed, I'm not super big on sharing photos of myself shirtless. Um, and the reason for that is because I just don't feel that I should need to use my my abs and you know my body to sell myself my products or my results i think what if i'm going to be successful as far as my business is concerned um the results of my clients should speak louder than my own personal results right because you can't question my my clients results you know i've got a number of one-on-one -on -one training clients that are you know, I'll give you guys an example. And if you're part of the Facebook group, you know who this is, Art Perez. Um, Art Perez just clocked in today at 229 pounds. That's the lightest that man, he's in his 50s, 40s. That's the lightest that man has been since high school. And if you saw a couple weeks or a couple days ago, he posted a picture of himself at over 400 pounds. And that man speaks... Nothing but great things about my training and my programming. Why? Because it works. So I don't need to take a sh my shirt off to flaunt my success and my, my you know, knowledge and skill as far as this stuff is concerned. Because I can use guys like Art Perez. Uh, another good example is uh, a, a one of my current clients. His name is Dave. When Dave first came to me, he's like, man, all I want to do is get big arms. That's all I care about. I want 22 inch arms. I'm like, okay. And uh, I've been working with Dave for about, what is it, 12 weeks now, one on one. And Dave has seen an immense strength increase in every lift, including his legs. We fixed his squats and his hips. So now he's able to actually squat and do legs. And he's progressing faster than anyone I've ever seen as far as strength is concerned. I don't know how many of you guys are out there who can military press strict over 200 pounds. But that man can do it. And it's from my programming. Right? So I have guys like that. Success stories who continue to promote my business and my, my training. So... I don't need to promote my body to do that, right? Um, but to go back and answer your question, what's my cheat meal? So I'm really, 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 really bad about binge eating carbs, right? So I'll be on a really good diet and then I'll wake up at like 2 o'clock in the morning or I'll be awake at like 2 o'clock in the morning and I'll go into the kitchen and literally just stuff myself in my face. Right now, my my... My snack, my go-to snack has been, um, <laughs> has been, uh, these little peanut butter pretzels that you can get at Sam's Club. They come in a big fucking tub like this and, uh, they got, they're just pretzels with peanut butter in them. Dude, I'll literally fucking eat those things by the handful. I'm so bad about it. Um, but as far as cheap meal is concerned, I'm a burger guy, man. I love cheeseburgers. That's what I eat. If I go to a restaurant, I'm probably going to get a cheeseburger. Right? <laughs> All right. James said, you can't get mad at little man. He's a boy. Dude, I'm telling you, raising boys is so much different than raising girls. Like, And it's crazy to me because uh, just the things he's naturally interested in. Are so much different than what a girl is naturally interested in. Like my kid, my daughter is naturally gravitated towards, you know, playing house and playing dolls and painting nails and you know they want to be like mom, right? My son, dude, I've been working on the floors. This fool follows me around with a hammer. I built some stairs for him to be able to walk up onto the trampoline we have in the backyard. And today I, I did uh, put some braces on the stairs uh, so that they wouldn't crack through because they were too too wobbly. And sure enough, dude, he's out there with the hammer. Everything I do. Uh, stepdad has motorcycles in the garage. 
he uh, he wants to climb up and sit on the motorcycles. He wants to ride his bike. Like he just wants to do boy shit. He has little cars. He plays with the cars. You know, it's it's crazy to me, dude. <laughs> Dave said, thank you. Yes, yes, brother. I mean, I'm super incredibly proud of all your hard work. And it's to the point now where, you know, Dave and I, we've been training together for long enough where uh, our check-ins are like 10 minutes. He already knows what I'm going to tell him before I even get on the phone. He's like, yeah, I know I need to fix this. Yeah, I know. And that's the whole purpose of the training, the one-on-one training that I do and any of the training that I do with you guys. The whole idea and the concept behind my programming and the, and the training that I do for you guys is to teach you how to do it yourself. I don't want you to be reliant upon me to be successful. I want you to have the tools and gain the knowledge and build a foundation and a baseline of how to do it for yourself. That way you don't need to sit and, you know, consistently and repeatedly pay me over and over. Right. And all of my one-on-one training clients that I've, that I've gone through eight weeks with, and we've gone together. Um, that's an investment that they've put into themselves and the knowledge that they're taking with them for the rest of their lives that they're applying. Art Perez is no longer one of my clients one-on-one clients. He's just following one of my programmings, but he's applying what I taught during the one-on-one training. And he's uh, seeing incredible results. I mean, like I said, he's down to 229, better than he's ever been, right? Uh, James said, just wait till he's pushing dad if he gets into lifting. Dude, it was funny. So today I'm out. I've got this. He's, He's all about balls right now. Right, so he's got a soccer ball, a basketball, a football. He plays with balls. Um, I know I'm a wrestler, and the thing I always told guys is I don't play with balls, but he plays with balls. All right, so, um, <laughs> but uh, I had this I had this eight pound medicine ball sitting out in the garage, and I don't whatever it's just sitting out there. And he decides he wants to play with it, but he goes to pick it up, and he's like, "Oh shit." This thing's heavy, man. <laughs> and uh, at first, you know, he goes to pick it up and he's like, eh, eh, you know, he starts crying. He's got a little like, you know, and I'm like, come on, man, pick it up. And I'm like, come on, pick it up. And I'm starting to like, come on, pick it up. Next thing you know, this dude grabs it. And he's like, Ugh! and he picks it up and he holds it and he looks at me with a big old smile on, a, on his face and he drops it on the ground. And he's like, Ugh! and I was like, yeah, right. And so then <laughs> this is, this is exactly how it happened too. So then he walks over and there's a little 10 pound dumbbell sitting on the ground and this fool straight up gets down and fucking deadlifts it. Right. He's like, and drops it on the ground. So next time he does it, I'm I'm gonna have to record it for you guys because he's like, he's getting it. So what I'm gonna do is I think a a couple months ago I bought you know a bench press for the outside that does incline. You know I was gonna start building up my home gym, uh, but I bought this bench press and it had like 300 pounds of weight. And this dude, I got it out of steel. It was a great, great quality, great shape. Fucking, he gave it to me for a hundred bucks. I was like, done. So I bought it. And then I was thinking about it. I'm like, man, I'm not really ever going to use this thing. I've got my gym. It's only a few minutes away. I love working out there because the social interaction I get with the people. I just love the ownership. It's just a great place to work out. Uh, Fuck it. Plus, I could get at least 200 off of this bench, right? So sure enough, dude, I went on a Facebook marketplace. I put it up there for 200. Next day, some dude was in my driveway picking it up. I doubled my money. And so that here I am I'm like, man, dude, I could fucking do this shit all day. So I go on there and I start looking at more workout equipment that I could, re, you know, I was like, now I got $200. Okay, let's see what we can do with $200. So I'm looking on there and uh, I'm like, okay, you know what? <laughs> We're not going to turn our, turn, turn a, you know, Facebook marketplace hustle 
because I'll be consumed with that. And here we are trying to flip fucking garbage off of Marketplace. But um, I think because he's interested in it, you can buy like the little foam weight sets on Amazon. It has like a bench press and a squat rack and all that. So when I get to a point where I start to put together my own garage gym that I can use in situations like this or to record videos or whatever for you guys... Uh, I'm probably going to get him a weight set too so he has it he can lift with me maybe probably six months to a year from now when he's a little bit older you know able to understand and, and do that stuff you know James said I thank you for all the stuff you share with us hell yeah man it's my pleasure Bill <laughs> hell yeah weighted ball <laughs> appreciate you hanging out and talking to us it's my pleasure man Like like I said so I did tonight, it was kind of script free. I really, really wanted to talk about that emotion, the emotional stress and kind of what we we're going through with all that. And I thought it was pretty important that we get that out there and, you know, really, you know, I, I want you guys to know that, you know, when it comes to anxiety, depression, those emotions, those negative emotions, they come from fear doubt, uncertainty, insecurities, all those negative things are what build depression, right? If you guys are Star Wars fans, right, um, they, you know, Yoda t tells Anakin St Skywalker, I sense much fear in you, right? And the whole idea behind that is like, Anakin was Darth Vader, great human being. Great morals, always wanted to do the right thing, but he carried fear with him, worry, doubt, right? Thinking about his mom towards the end of the you know first three episodes, he's worried about his wife and what's going to happen with his kid, and you know she's pregnant and like he's carrying all this fear and this debt, this anxiety, right? And that ultimately consumed him to where. What he was able to do was, uh, what he ended up doing was allowing it to overcome and control the decisions that he was making where he was willing to do whatever he thought that it would take in order to overcome and defeat the things that he was fearful of, right? When in reality, the things that he feared, he actually manifested into himself and what he became none of the things that he was fearful of would have happened or occurred had he not focused on those things and just continued you know on the path of doing the right thing and focusing on the things that he can control right and that was how Darth Vader was born and that's the story of you know the star the birth of Darth Vader and Star Wars and the dark side and da 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 right but the idea and the concept behind that plot and that story is very important because it also applies to us as people right give me a sec what you doing boy don't pull that you're gonna knock it down buddy you want this So I'm a super big nerd, right? And, um, you know, it's really important that we, you know, we take the time to try to apply the lessons and things that we learn through movies and things that, you know, like that. Um, and hopefully help, to help you guys and help people understand those concepts, right? Uh, Heather said, do or do not, there is no try. That's right. What you doing, Bubba? <laughs> Rick, the worry, doubt, and anxiety is a real thing. Matter what you're going through in lives, these can, things can wear you down. I know firsthand. Absolutely. Pick it up. There you go. It can. But just like anything, man, anything can wear you down. Anything can tear at you and pick at you. You as a human being... Right, and I said it last week. I said it in another video that I had earlier this week. I said very specifically, I said, Hey, right, 
uh, the one thing that you can always control is how much effort you put into things. And it's your choice how much effort you put into what. And that also includes how much time you decide that you want to spend focused and concentrated on the things that are important to you, what you prioritize. What, dude? Hmm? You want to talk? You want to say hi to everybody? I'm sure they're excited to say hi to you. What do you think? Hmm? Come here. No? He's, he wants a bottle. I'll be right back. Sorry, guys. Come on. You want to eat? All right. <laughs> Get it. So he's doing this thing where he's almost to go get it. Go get it. He's almost to. And uh, he is like to a point now where I can talk to him. Just like I'm talking to you right now. And he understands most of what I'm saying. He totally gets what I'm saying. Like right now he knows I'm talking about him. But he refuses. Refuses to talk. And, and it's been a struggle for us. Right? Trying to figure out different unique and ways. Like trying to get him like do it with songs. And this and that. But he just he just doesn't want to talk. I don't know what it is, man, but Kayla Kayla thinks it's because he knows he doesn't have to to get what he wants. Right? See this so that's him saying thank you. You're welcome. I'm gonna keep saying it until I say you're welcome. <laughs> um but so Dude, what is your deal? Here. Here. Alright, give me one more sec, guys. Sorry. Come on. Sorry about that. One, one last time. But anyway, like I was saying, guys, like, you you have a choice, right, what you're focusing on. You have a choice what you where you decide to put your energy. And, yeah, everybody's got their anxiety. Everybody's got their, their demons that they struggle with. But here's the thing, right? What I try to do is I'm, I'm a disabled vet and I deal with these things, uh, you know, and they're medically diagnosed, okay? Um, I look at my disabilities and, or as the VA would label them as, you know, the equivalent of a physical disability. So if me as a person, I'm missing a fucking leg, is that going to stop me? Right? No, it's not. If I have reduced function in one hand because whatever, right, from a combat injury, am I going to allow that to stop me? No. And you see these athletes and these people out there who are 
overcoming these insane feats of just absolute courage and just defying the handicaps that they have. Right? And um, <clears throat> those are disabilities. They're physical disabilities. Well, there are some folks with mental disabilities. And, you know, I will never let something stop me from achieving what I want to achieve and pursuing what I want to pursue. That just means it's going to be that much harder for me to accomplish what I'm trying to accomplish than the next guy. It's my handicap, right? Just like if I was missing a leg. If I wanted to be a marathon or super marathon runner and I'm missing a leg, I can do it. It's just going to be that hard, much harder for me. You see these guys doing handstand push-ups on dip bars while strapped to fucking wheelchairs. And if there's a guy doing that, and I'm telling, telling myself that I can't even fucking get myself out of bed to go to the gym because I'm depressed, there's something wrong, right? And the great thing about the world is, is we live in a place where you just take a second to look around and there are people out there every day who are overcoming these insane and just spectacular fucking achievements while dealing with handicap, right? And every single person out there ha who's successful, I can tell you right now, has a fucking story. And that story is going to have a lot of adversity that story is going to have a lot of periods during their lives where they're doubtful, they're fearful, they didn't have, they're poor, they're broke, they're homeless, they were this, they were that, and they overcame those things. So what I charge you with is if you're in a point where you have this mindset telling yourself you can't, take a look around. Because there's a thousand other people out there who suffered what you are suffering or even worse, who did. So what makes you different than them? It's your mindset. That's what it is. They chose not to give up. Because just like I posted on Facebook and Instagram the other day, you can't lose if you never give up. Ever. Right? Rick said it's... It is true. I went through a divorce and took a lot out of me. I'm now working to get back to where I feel good about myself. My kids are my number one focus. Thank you, Swole, for encouragement. It helps a lot more than words could ever say. It's my pleasure, man. I really just want to share my experiences and my knowledge with you guys, and hopefully that you can get the best benefit from it. <clears throat> Bill, we'll do it together. That's right, bro. That's why this group is here. That's why this podcast is here, so we can do this shit together, right? James asked if I was having my surgery. Uh, what are my plans on my program? Um, so, Maverick, go lay down. Uh, so I got a call from the surgery center last week. And actually two weeks ago, my surgery was supposed to be today. And so the plan was for me to do my podcast while tripped out on anesthesia all fucked up. No, but um, they canceled it because of the coronavirus and basically told me that they will call me back to reschedule. Go in your bed. I can't wait for him to get his shoes, not because he doesn't slip, because I don't have, so I won't have to listen to his nails anymore. <laughs> So I also had like an optometrist appointment that was scheduled because I needed to renew my prescription. They canceled that. I'm literally wearing my last pair of contacts that are now overdue to be changed for like a month now. My surgery was canceled, which means I'm going to have to do two more appointments just to get the surgery done. The first is going to be the pre-op and then I'm going to have to do the surgery again. Um, I've had tons of medical stuff that's just been put on the back burner because of this thing, which really sucks. Um, <clears throat> let's see. Heather was replying to Rick and said, you got to take care of you. I've been there. Focus on your physical, mental, and emotional health. Not just that, but your spiritual health, guys. Don't forget. 
All right. That doesn't mean you have to go find God. That just means that you have to figure out and think about, you know, the spiritual spirituality behind that. They're all connected. Your well-being is all connected. If you're not taking care of yourself physically, then you're going to suffer emotionally, mentally, and spiritually, and vice versa. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> he said, just make sure he he's already got tap shoes, man, everywhere. And the thing is, is if I get up, he gets up like he follows me everywhere. So basically when I'm in the house doing my thing, you know, working, walking around, well, there he is, click, click clacking around, right? <laughs> All right, man, it's hard. I can't get mad at him. It's not his fault. I'm the one who chose to put the floors in the way I did, but hey, doesn't change the fact that it's annoying. <clears throat> Just make sure that, yeah. All right. So, you know, a couple more things before I close out of here for tonight. Um, and just so you guys know, uh, I answered some questions about the body weight program, which is obviously, or, or it's still available on the website for free. Just go to bodyweight.joshholyfield.com. Drop your email in there, just like the four-week plan. I'll send you a copy of the body weight program, no cost, okay? Um, you're still going to get my emails asking you to join the podcast. You're still going to get my emails asking, uh, you know, for you asking you to check out my products. Um, I am a small business. Uh, this is the business that I use to put food on my table and feed my kids. So that's the one thing I did want to talk about in closing tonight was... Hey, if you guys are still at work and you're still working and you haven't suffered from this thing financially, okay, I really want to charge you with the thought of compassion and helping others. And that doesn't necessarily mean you go out there and fucking donate your hard-earned money to some, you know, person who needs it. But what I am telling you is, is maybe you can look at considering ways that you can buy from and support small businesses, right? Because there's a lot of small businesses that have been impacted and affected by this quarantine and these shutdowns, right? Um, you know, so as an example, my gym membership, I didn't cancel it. I didn't freeze it because I know that th those are small business owners and those people rely on that monthly draft in order to put food on their table for their kids. So it, and it's no, it's no sweat off my back to make sure they get my 40 bucks a month or whatever. So, hey, right? If I have it, let them have it. Um, but, you know, in the same concept, like if there's something you need or whatever, instead of going to the Walmarts and the Targets and Home Depots and the Willows and these big corporations that aren't suffering, look at how you can buy from small business first. Yeah, maybe a little bit more. Yeah, maybe a little bit more inconvenient. But that's a way that you can directly impact and help those small businesses thrive and succeed and make it through these things, right? So a great example, I've got a friend of mine, Koi. He owns a tattoo studio over here in town. He's very successful in what he does. The business that he has is... It was uh, booming. He has multiple artists that work in his in his shop, and he's doing really well. But obviously, he had to shut down. So he had to adapt. And so what he's doing is he's selling apparel, which is great. It's it's incredible that he still has that uh, ability to do that. But um, you know, if you can. Go to your favorite small business and buy one of their shirts or whatever, right? So another example, and if you guys are interested, I'll do another post about it uh, probably tomorrow. My mother, she owns a yoga studio. So what she's been having to do because her studio is shut down is uh, live stream classes on Facebook. So if you guys are interested in you doing yoga or spin classes, let me know. I can hook you up. Your first class with my mom is free. You can tune into her live stream and participate in that in the comfort of your home, right? So it's stuff like that where these small business owners and these people are, they're having to adapt. Um, they're having to figure out ways to overcome to keep the lights on in their businesses, okay? Um, so if you can, make that effort, okay? Try to support those small businesses, right?
If you want one of these decals custom made by me, they're on my website. They're like three bucks. I'll send it to you. They're pretty badass. All right. Um, a couple more things. So we've only got about a week left on the supplement giveaway that's happening on the Facebook page. Okay. If you haven't already taken the time to go over there and enter, just head to Facebook or Instagram. You can find the giveaway post on the Facebook page. It's pinned to the top. So all you got to do is go to the Josh Holyfield JJH Lives Facebook page and you'll see that giveaway in there. Okay. All you have to do to enter that giveaway is to share it, follow my page and tag two of your friends and you're entered. Okay. Make sure you tag your friends in the comments, not in the share, because some people have private profiles, so I can't see if you actually tag your friends. Okay. Plus, the idea is to try to get your friends to share it, too. Um, if you guys don't know, I also post the audio for these things on my website as well. So if you want to catch up, listen to in the car or whatever, you can always go to podcast.joshholyfield.com or you can find Make America Swole, America Swole Again on all of your radio stations, pod, uh, iTunes, Spotify, iHeartRadio, etc. Okay, so uh, we do the audio and the video. So what I do after these podcasts is I go in and I cut out like all the breaks and all that stuff and then I put the audio up for you. Um, one more thing, congratulations to the three winners from our push-up competitions over the last two weeks. Uh, Wyatt Huber, he won the push-up challenge on the Facebook group. Uh, we didn't get enough female entries for the, for the females in the Facebook group, so I wasn't able to do a female bracket. Uh, but I did the female bracket on Instagram, and Piper Dominguez, she won that uh that challenge with 108 push-ups on the final day it was pretty incredible seeing her do that um and then sandoval fit he is a personal trainer who operates out of albuquerque new mexico also won the male bracket on instagram so congratulations to the three of those guys their shirts have been sent and they all got free josh holyfield t-shirts that they can wear and rep okay um, thinking about doing a pull-up competition. I know the other day I said I was going to post the bracket for it, but I'm kind of uh, willy-nilly about doing the pull-ups just because uh, not everybody has a standard pull-up bar, so it's going to be difficult to rate and grade people doing pull-ups off of like rafters and shit, right? So um, not really sure if I'm going to move forward with that just as I spent more time thinking about it, but I definitely will be doing another tournament of some sort within the next few days. So make sure you stay tuned on Instagram and Facebook. I'll be posting those up. Okay. Hey, Sue said, uh, thank you for another great podcast. It's my pleasure, friend. I really look forward and love the opportunity to get on here and interact with you guys. That's really why I do this, right? I want this to be a personal thing where we can go back and forth with each other, get to know each other, right? Um, James said, thank you for your time and be good and safe. It's my pleasure. You as well, my friend. Heather, small business helps me continue to go to work. Doggy daycare is deemed essential. There you go. People can buy gift certificates to be used later. Some of my hometown businesses. If you want, Heather... If this is uh, your small business where you're doing doggy daycare, uh, you're more than welcome to do a post for promoting your small business in the Facebook group. And that goes for everybody. Um, this is a very limited one-time thing. I have a very strict no promotions rule in my Facebook group. But because of the circumstances, if you guys want, post your small business, whether or not you're online or if you're a brick and mortar like you are, doggy daycare, obviously I can't mail my dog to you uh but you're more than welcome to do a post in my facebook group okay rick said let's all take care of our small businesses that's right he's one of them and i understand that we're all going through it let's stick together that's right hell yeah man um james to answer your question before i cut off here for the night what muscle rub do i use i personally love tiger balm um, comes in a little container. It's like this big. I don't know where it is, but um, Tiger Bomb is the shit. Definitely my favorite muscle rub. Uh, the other thing that really, really helps, and 
I won't get all too super hippie on you, but my mom is super essential uh, essential oil hippie. Uh, peppermint oil works incredible for joint pain and swelling if you're having issues with your joints. Um, you can get a bottle of peppermint oil from, you know, Walmart or Target for maybe five bucks. If you don't want to do that, you can get it on Amazon. Just be careful when you're using essential oils because they're extremely concentrated. So you probably only need like one or two drops. Rub it on the affected area and it works incredible. Okay. Yeah, Tiger Bomb is extra strength. It's really, really good stuff. Okay. It's like icy hot on steroids. All right, guys. Without further ado, it's been a real, real pleasure tonight sitting here and talking with you. Um, <laughs> and uh, I will definitely come better prepared next week with a script for you. My goal really, uh, every, at least every couple weeks or every few weeks, is to just freestyle it, spend the evening more bullshitting with you guys and talking back and forth um, rather than you know, uh, going off of a script and feeding you guys my platform of, you know, perspective. So, um, hopefully you guys enjoyed. I really, really do enjoy talking back and forth with you and, uh, be safe, be sanitary and stay vigilant. Have a wonderful night.